Paris, June 2015, UNESCO Headquarters. The International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers, jointly with the Russian Federation Representative Office to UNESCO and the Soldiers of Peace International Association of Peacekeepers, held the Mission for Peace and Friendship International Humanitarian Action dedicated to the 70th anniversary of victory over fascism and the International Day of the UN Peacekeepers. The fourth meeting of the committee was held as well. Representative international delegations from over 30 states arrived in Paris. Among participants of the International Advisory Committee were heads of reserve officers NGOs, UN peacekeeping operations veterans, Supreme French Command representatives, high-ranking officials from a number of states and diplomats. The meeting was aimed at discussing further ways of cooperation, measures to combat international terrorism and military conflicts, as well as coordination of activities of reserve officers and peacekeeping forces under nowadays geopolitical environment. The issues of war and peace and averting armed conflicts are the focal points of our discussions. It's every soldier it sits at the same table, yes, for the peace, for the peace, or for the commemorative to 17 anniversary. Today, there is a need for joint efforts to promote prevention of all military conflicts. Nowadays, the issue of war and peace prevails over other problems. There is no progress without people believing in their cause and their idea. We are aimed at peace. It is not fortuitous the meeting was held at the headquarters of UNESCO, one of the UN's bodies that consists of 195 countries, two states and nine associated member territories. UNESCO has always been considered an intellectual organization, a laboratory of souls and conscience of mankind. That's why I believe the event corresponds to the spirit of our organization. The International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers has been holding similar humanitarian events for almost five years. Moscow, Vienna, Bratislava, Astana, Belgrade and now Paris. The number of participants and associates increases annually. Public attention was especially drawn by the fact that the military themselves are against wars. Any war brings death to ordinary people and soldiers. As a veteran, I know the value for life. We are doing our utmost, not enough though, to preserve peace. Opening the meeting, UNESCO Deputy Director General Nada Al Nashif welcomed the participants and organizers of the event. I'd like to particularly stress the importance of the slogan that has been used for the preparation of the actions devoted to this anniversary. The slogan which says, Nobody is forgotten, nothing is forgotten. Our memory and people's memory is hopefully also a life-giving source for our veterans, those who are today our history bearers. President of the International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers, Alexander Kanchin, made a statement on the role of veteran organizations to avert armed conflicts and provide for peace and security. After the Second World War, a dialogue is often followed by confrontation processes. Why does it happen? Diplomats find themselves unable to develop a dialogue. Naturally, in these circumstances, methods of people's diplomacy are needed. Nobody forbids us to meet and talk like this. I think that following our meeting will address heads of our states. First and foremost, everything must be solved by means of negotiations, contacts and talks, rather than saber-rattling. Participants of the meeting noted that historical memory of the tragedy of the Second World War 
encourages for a more active search for solutions to nowadays security threats. The statistics cited is eloquent. After the Second World War, the globe saw 250 wars and armed conflicts with 90 states to be engaged in, killing over 35 million people. Everybody knows the magnitude of devastations in the East, which give rise to the idea of deploying UN Special Forces or UN peacekeepers, nobody says for sure, to protect the worldwide legacy from destruction. As it has been mentioned, and especially in my region, the Middle East, we still suffering from so many wars, and I think as veterans in these organizations, Events held over the past couple of years, along with today's international humanitarian action for peace and friendship, have reaffirmed the variability of the course for strengthening friendship and cooperation among officers of reserve. Those participating expressed concerns over the increasing threat of terrorism, so-called transnational terrorism, similar to the Middle East ISIL, is gaining momentum. It is shredding the globe into pieces and knows no boundaries. President of the Soldiers of Peace International Association of Peacekeepers, Loran Atar Bayrou, stressed that today, as never before, the consolidation of efforts is needed and one of the pivotal directions is setting up the core of peacekeeping forces under the UN auspices. After the Second World War, the UN became a stronghold for peace building, striving for peace through education, science and culture, to advocate human rights and developing a dialogue among people are among the noble goals of the organization. The world has begun making noise and talking too often about war. I deeply respect all generals and reserve officers as their points of view are the most important. You know the essence of war in its various dimensions. And I think that we should use that brotherhood to not only create more friendship, but also communicate more with each other. I consider you as an old friend because of your way of living and way of thinking. I think that I know you for many years because of your opinions for world, war and world peace. The International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers acts in full compliance with its main principle, namely that of people's diplomacy and searches for new ways to implement it. We work with veterans, the youth and children and realize that the most vulnerable groups in armed conflicts are the elderly, children and women. It takes an hour to unleash a conflict and decades to stop it. Last year, during a meeting in Belgrade, we made a decision to hold an international cinema festival of documentary films and TV programs under the motto for a world without wars and armed conflicts. Those taking the floor backed the idea to hold the international film festival of documentary films and TV programs for a world without wars and armed conflicts. Its main prize with the symbolic name of the crystal world stresses the idea of our planet's fragility. Through art it is aimed at affecting people living in various countries and uniting them for a noble endeavor of saving peace. Almost 30 states today are participating in the festival and this is the easiest part. They will take the ideas of peacekeeping and send their works to us. They will draw public attention to the problem of people hit by armed conflicts. The film festival presentation took place. UNESCO showed interest in the IAC's new project 
and offered its assistance and platform for the forthcoming film festival. I think the festival winners should be got in touch with and honored. There are a lot of documentary materials, serials and movies. Our world-known producer Emir Kusturica would also like to join the event. I deeply appreciate and support film festivals dedicated to peace as opposed to war and people doing their utmost to keep peace. The film festival is a very good incentive as it is focused on the military cinematography. A number of organizational issues was arranged during the meeting. President of the Soldiers of Peace International Association, Loran Atar Bayrou, and Mahmoud Irdaisat, Director General of the Economic and Social Association of Pensioners and Servicemen of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, were elected Vice Presidents of the IAC. In compliance with the Charter, there was taken a decision to rename further committee's meetings into those of the General Assembly. Summarizing the forum's results, the Charter of Peace final document was adopted, which became an address to heads of states, governments, and the entire international community with an appeal to actively confront today's threats and challenges related to, above all, military conflicts and extremism. It is very important that participants of the event representing both NATO and former Warsaw Pact unanimously agree that all sorts of military conflicts must be averted through joint efforts. Alexander Kanchin, President of the International Advisory Committee of Organizations of Reserve Officers and President of the Soldiers of Peace International Association, Loran Atar Bayrou, handed awards and symbols of honor to veterans and UN representatives. Born in peacetime, war may result in peace, and striving for peace is an eternal battle. Peacekeepers marking the International UN Peacekeepers Day, a memorable date, attached particular attention to the committee and its projects and discussed ways for cooperation. Distinguished participants, dear friends and brothers, it is a great honor for me to be surrounded by people serving for peace. The IAC's highest award of knighthood order for an outstanding contribution to support veterans and for active work with the youth was handed to advisor to the Prime Minister of Slovakia, Joseph Migas, and State Secretary of Veterans of the French Defense Ministry, Jean-Marc Todescini. The award was given to his advisor, Mr. Joseph Pascal. I get down on my knee to express my respect for millions of casualties each of our countries has suffered. Let us not lose the hope. It's a great mission. It is noteworthy the IEC's meeting organized jointly with the Soldiers of Peace International Association was held for the first time in such a form. In conclusion, I would like to say that organizations of reserve officers possess great authority in their countries and among them there are members of governments, law enforcement agencies, ministries, including the Ministry of Defense, security agencies and deputies of different levels. Relying on these people, we can do a lot, including stating that peace today is very fragile and let us do everything for our children and grandchildren to be friends, not foes. Thank you. Following the meeting, the participants of the Mission for Peace and Friendship headed for the Charles de Gaulle Square Memorial at the Paris Arch of Triumph to take part in a wreath-laying ceremony to the eternal flame commemorating the events of the Second World War.
The IAC is an organization that unites reserve officers from all over the world. Being peacekeepers, it is of great importance for us to touch upon the issues of peace. Very serious time, it is very important to have to create peace in the world. The mission for peace and friendship, action, has come to an end. It undoubtedly became a visible symbol of the brotherhood of officers and veterans and of a union of different nations and generations. The Paris meeting is an important event that will have a deep positive response in the memory and hearts of the participants, guests and organizers. Сердце стало у всех ледяное, о любви и мечте забываем, и все чаще близких теряем, за идею слепую, не близкую нам. Мы не слышим и спорим друг с другом. Но помнись и протяни руку. Важно, какого ты цвета, на каком ты конце планеты, Ведь для нас, для всех, земля одна.